in the deserts of Arabia, an insurgency war was raging years before I got to France. Tribes of Bedouins had united to fight a war that was very different from the one we fought in the trenches. Using small mobile units, they challenged the might of an empire, and they were rallied around the ideas of a single influential warrior. Ideas of freedom and change. The Arabian Desert, a vast ocean of drifting sands and scorched, sun-baked rocks. Beneath these endless dunes, oil, the lifeblood of our new mechanical century. For more than 400 years, the Ottoman Empire has ruled these lands, controlling all that's to be found here. but the Ottomans do not rule unopposed. Small bands of Bedouin rebels have united to overthrow the empire. They strike without warning and then vanish into the desert. Fighting alongside them is a lone British officer whose exploits have earned him wide renown. The world has taken to calling this man Lawrence of Arabia. In the desert, you rely on good planning, but you also hope for a dash of luck. And luck was with us when we learned of a recently derailed Ottoman train carrying a most interesting piece of cargo. A small patrol had joined the Ottomans who survived the crash. Together, they guarded the wreckage and waited for reinforcements. A lone fighter has just one advantage over a large enemy force. A lone fighter can move unseen. The tribesmen fought unconventionally, using weapons they knew well. Endurance, 
individual intelligence and courage were their primary assets. When your enemy has better weapons and better equipment than you, steal from your enemy. You did not think we would be fast enough to catch you here, did you? Lawrence of Arabia. Actually, I was rather depending on it. Eh, Lawrence? Ah. Well, this is very clever. Now the hunter becomes the hunted. So who might you be? How enchanting you are, my dear. <laughs> Ahmed. I'll show you enchanting. If it weren't for you, I'd be free. Free, is it? You'll be free when you're dead. And I'm happy to tell you, the Empire intends to grant you all this freedom very soon. Even now, an engine of destruction scours this desert, obliterating your allies. Your families, your homes. Soon there will be nowhere to run! Nowhere to hide! Soon all that you know, and all that you love, will be ashes. You will all be free to die. Oh, you animal! Zara! Understand that you would like nothing more than to strip the flesh from that man's feet and send him off into the desert naked to die. But think about it. You're right. I'm sorry. My friend here, she can be a little brusque. You're going to tell me how to lie to your train so we can lure it into a trap and destroy it. <laughs> Impossible. 
To even begin to talk to that train, you would need an entire book of communication codes. Oh, like this one, you mean? You can never stop the progress of machines! One day, the whole world will take your lands and the precious black gold beneath its sands. We shall see, my friend. Of course, obtaining the codebook was not enough. To destroy this Iron Dragon, this Canavar, as the Ottomans had named it, we had to send it three encrypted messages telling it to stand down. There were Ottoman outposts scattered along the railroad tracks. The commanders there carried high-priority message capsules. We had to use those to send our orders. Infiltrating the village wouldn't be easy. A full detachment of Ottoman soldiers had occupied it. The Ottomans had chosen an isolated location for their desert outpost. It seemed lightly defended. It was also well stocked with arms and equipment. The ancient ruins were all that remained of a civilization now lost to time. The Ottoman Empire brought in the modern world with a host of armored vehicles and field guns. Three commanders to eliminate, three personal message capsules. How Zara tackled this dangerous and audacious mission was up to her. The Bedouin treasured their horses, and in return, those animals granted their riders unparalleled speed and mobility.
single order wouldn't be enough. Ottoman protocol required the message to be received in triplicate before the train would acknowledge it as genuine.
We were putting a great deal of trust in Zara's capabilities. But I had complete confidence that she would carry the day.
see the message had already been sent, my dear. Not, not the message you would have wanted. Eloran's was such a good host. It almost seemed rude to escape. I made sure to note the location of Lawrence's camp, of course. Which means... the train knows too. Twice. You told that train everything was clear. But... I told it exactly where to attack. The beast has your scent, my dear. And it's coming to slaughter you and your little band of rebels. First, the firestorm from the cannon. Then, up close with the troops to slaughter any survivors. The legend of Lawrence of Arabia dies tonight. Away just in time. Till Kitchy was a fool to think we'd ever stay after he escaped. The carnival won't stop hunting us. No, it won't. Let me think. The train's coming a long way. So it'll have to stop to take on water. That's where we strike. Agreed. I'll deal with any sentries then. Rig explosives on the track. Yes, and I'll rally our fighters. When I blow the lines, the, the train will be trapped. So when you hear the blast, you need to attack them with everything you have. It's good. You know that there's a chance the men may not come. You may set off those explosives and find you're out there all alone. You know that. I guess I won't know either way until I set it off. Yes, no. Man makes plans and God laughs. As it turned out, the small town where we would ambush the train had a significant enemy presence. Those troops would have to be dealt with before the explosives could be set.
Once Zara secured the town, the trap could be set for the arriving train. Once Zara secured the town, the trap could be set for the arriving train.
vengeance can be a sweet or bitter brew. How did you find it, Zara? And you're right, we do need to think bigger, act bigger. Maybe even the Suez Canal. Tell me, what do you know about battleships? One day, all this will be over. The war to end all wars will be won by one side or the other. The guns will rust, grass will grow, and there'll be nothing left of any of this. The land will heal itself, as everything does in the end. We'll be long gone by then, but maybe not forgotten. History only remembers one in a thousand of us. Then the future will be filled with stories of who we were and what we did, how we lived, how we fought, and how we died. When this is all over and the war is won, they will remember us. But until that day comes, we will stand. We will look death in the eye. And we will fight.
When I was a young man, I carried my pack and I lived the free life of a rover. From the Murray's Green Basin to the dusty outback, I waltzed my Matilda all over. Then in 1915, my country said, son, it's time to stop rambling, cause there's work to be done. So they gave me a tin hat and they gave me a gun and they sent me away to the war. And the band played waltzing Matilda As we sailed away from the Kai And amidst all the tears And the shouts and the cheers We sailed off for Gallipoli Oh, well, I remember that terrible day when the blood stained the sand and the water and how in that hell that they call Sovla Bay we were butchered like lambs at the slaughter Johnny Turkey was ready he primed himself well He showered us with bullets And he rained us with shells And in five minutes flat He'd blown us all to hell Nearly blew us right back to Australia And the band played waltzing Matilda as we stop to bury our slain And we buried ours And the Turks buried theirs And it started all over again Now those who were living Did their best to survive in that mad world of death, blood and fire And for seven long weeks I kept myself alive All the corpses around me piled higher Then a big Turkish shell knocked me a over tip and when I awoke in my hospital bed And saw what it had done Christ, I wished I was dead Never knew there were worse things than dying And no more I'll go on sing Matilda So the green bushes so far and near For the hang tens and pegs A man needs two legs No more waltzing Matilda for me The armless, 
the blind and insane Those proud wounded heroes of Sofla And as our ship pulled in so circular key I looked at the place where me legs used to be And thank Christ there was nobody waiting for me To grieve and to mourn and to pity And the band played waltzing Matilda As they carried us down the gangway But nobody cheered They just stood and stared And they turned their faces away And now every April I sit on my porch And I watch the parade pass before me I see my own comrades How proudly they march Reliving the dream of past glory I see the old men all twisted and torn the forgotten heroes of a forgotten war and the young people ask me what are they marching for and I ask myself the same question And the band plays waltzing Matilda And the old men still answer the call But year after year Their numbers get fewer Someday no one will march there at all Well Sing Matilda, wild sing Matilda, who go a wild sing Matilda. 